Okay, so I got a pretty exciting uh, upgrade for Stoke. We're finally getting hot water. I bought a, um, a Whale Marine hot water heater. It takes 360 watts to heat up. My current faucet there only has cold. So this is a hot and cold faucet. If you look at this, this thing is completely loose because this faucet leaks and it has dripped inside there and it has deteriorated the wood right there. So I have to try to fix that wood, make that nice and solid before I install the new faucet. And if I have to, I'll make a backing plate um, so that that holds up nice. In order to work on that, I have to, I'm, I'm gonna just remove this whole island because there's almost no access to get to that and that thing is kind of corroded that, um, faucet it's really hard to I, I might even have to cut it off I'm not sure so we're just gonna remove this island and um, get gain some access to it I'll probably end up replacing the hoses and things down there because they're all old you know and, and gross so we'll, we'll get some new hoses in there some new plumbing and um, that's what we're doing right now all right so I'm using this the stuff it's called get get rot that stuff and I have put it all on here Okay, so um, the job I did yesterday didn't really work. The stuff that I put on there didn't really set. It was still kind of wet. I must not have mixed it properly. I put on some, some epoxy on there just to try to fill the gaps with epoxy. And I'm going to glass over the bottom of it to stiffen it up because it didn't get stiff. Um, I'm a little disappointed about that, but I, I got to go through this extra length to try to make this countertop stiff. So that's what I'm up to right now. Going to wet it down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so Just making those backing plates. Now let's just hope it works. <laughs> All right, I'm back at the boat. It seems to have worked pretty good. So this is very rigid now. It was really, really soggy and it would move. I put this right here and I had another piece of stainless steel behind it and I used this, this uh, welding clamp and I clamped it while it dried overnight. So it's nice and straight as well. So I've got some cleaning to do on it, but it's very rigid and I'm happy about that. I made that backing plate and it looks like it's working out pretty good. All right, so I've moved the, uh, the whole kitchen chingadera over here and um, just to give myself a little bit more working space. And now I'm in the process of going through hose by hose and switching out the old hose clamp for a new hose clamp and new hoses and this is going to be a long process man I am really starting to question <laughs> what I have started here is it all really worth hot water man oh man this is crazy look at this 
there's the galley well there's the yeah that part i've got a bunch of new hoses in here those are the old gross ones and replaced a bunch of the new hoses down there also but man oh man this place is in shambles i promise i'll get you back together <laughs> okay we're here on christmas eve still working on the boat uh, we got a dinner coming up at 6.15, so I only got a little bit of time, but I wanted to knock out a couple things. But I'd made some pretty good progress. Um, look what I did. I put the water heater in this little cavity underneath the engine compartment. Um, I had to finagle it in. I had to take off my Raycor filter. It's sitting right there. I had to take off my raw water hose, um, and I had to take off the air filter to get it in there. But it's in there and um so now i'm going to make a little piece a little board like a little platform so that it, it isn't slanted i want it to i want it to sit up straight like this you know and uh so that's what's next sometimes you just got to take a moment and stop working and see how beautiful it is Not bad. We are gonna make another wedge. So we have three, one, two, three. We're gonna put them on, we're gonna drill some holes. I got it marked. Okay, we're back at the boat and I'm making some progress on this hot water heater here. I haven't been filming the whole entire thing because um, it's just a bunch of silly plumbing, honestly. This is my cold. I've been trying to label everything. Um, and this will be my cold that goes to the faucet. And then this one I'll cut the same length. And that'll be the hot to the faucet. Here's a cool little tip. Check it out. So when you're dealing with normal hose clamps, you know, you have these uh, multi screwdrivers, right? They have this and you can switch it out, get your Phillips or whatever. Well, when you take that off, that fits right on the hose clamps. So it's like a socket wrench. And you could use it to tighten them up. It's a lot better than using the flathead because the flathead always slips off, especially in those hard to reach places. This is like a socket, just put it right on, tighten it up really tight. So just a little tip about the uh, multi screwdriver, the little hex inside there is exactly the size that you need for hose clamps okay so what i'm doing is this is my hot out coming out of the water heater and i teed it off because this is going to the galley this part but i teed it off here with a valve because later on i'm going to want to bring this to the head which is over there or i may even want to take it out to the cockpit for a cockpit shower something like that later but i figured i would just plumb it up now with the with a little um, valve and tee it off so that I can take that hot water to the head and the cockpit later. So this is one of the last ones and then I'll be ready to wire it up. While I got easy access to the transmission with everything taken off, I am changing the transmission fluid. I forget, it's not a Yanmar, but this little transmission it, um, it only takes 0.3 liters. This funnel that will tell me exactly how many liters I'm putting in so that I can get it right the first time. Okay, I'm back at the boat again. Um, it's been a few days since I worked on the water heater, so I need to really get back after it. I had to put the boat back together so we could hang out with some friends and do some stuff, and here I am taking it apart so I could finish the water heater project. I had to take a break from the other project for a minute. I need to put these hooks up just uh, doing something different feels good plus I need to hang some stuff up and put one here one over there so these hoses can be a little hard to put on their fittings you know uh, these guys right here sometimes or to take them off so what I've been doing is just using my heat gun and heat it up just a little bit on low just you know give it a little bit of heat and then it slides on a lot easier. 
boom, just like that. See that? Except for I'm a dummy. I didn't put on my hose clamp. So we'll do that. So there it is, boom, done deal. Okay, I'm wiring up the ground, the earth ground on the water heater. I'm putting it on the engine here. Now that's nice and proper, if you can see that. Put the bolt in the engine, and I've got my earth ground. So there's my earth ground, boom. So this is the, um, the red wire is the switch wire, and the yellow wire is the indicator light. And then this, this wire runs over there to the nav desk where I'm going to put another panel to start switching things on and off. All right, we are back at it again. Man, this project is really lingering on a lot longer than I wanted it to. But what are you going to do? I need to put a valve in place right here before the water gets to the water heater so that I can shut off the water before it gets there. Just yet another another thing, man. This has really spawned into a bunch of different projects, but that's okay. It is it's the way it goes. Let's just I'm just trying to finish it up, so let's get at it. We got the we got the cold working. Now time to wire it up and get the hot working. All right, I'm gonna install the other one of these guys. So I've got it taped off. It's gonna be this one. We're just gonna put in another one right there. The inverter is removed and just set off to the side there. <laughs> Man, this has been an extravaganza. Now I am installing um, my Victron. Orion T Smart 12 to 12 DC to DC charger. So, um, what this is going to do is this will take power from this battery bank and push it to the other battery bank that's in the V berth so that we can charge the batteries from one source. This means that battery bank A is charging battery bank B and battery bank A is charged by shore power or solar power. But that's what I'm doing right now. I just wired up, this right here says from battery bank A, that's this ba battery bank. Um, and then this right here is currently used, being charged off of the, the, um, the shore power charger. It's, it's pushing power over there to charge that battery because I've been testing the water heater. Because the water heater is hooked up, I will um, show that. I still have some things to do, but this little light right here, this tells me when it goes on and off. So it's still, everything's kind of like in the middle of being done, but it's all, well, mostly working. So still testing it, working things out, but that's what I'm doing right now. DC to DC charger. The wiring on these DC to DC chargers is pretty simple. It couldn't really be more simple. Check out the wiring here. So you've got a one ground, you've got your in positive and your out positive. I'm using this breaker here as kind of like an on-off switch just for now while I'm testing. But um, the wiring for this is really, really simple. Here's the new faucet. And here's the new plate I put on top to uh, just to kind of keep it stiff. So this mounts really stiff. And this thing is really, really stout now. So everything looks real nice. And let's turn it on and see some hot water. Oh man, that is hot.
There you go. There is the hot water. And it is super hot. Ow. Very nice. So there you have it. The hot water heater is installed and it's working and it's super awesome to have hot water finally on stoked. And stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to show you how I'm going to power that hot water heater with these watt cycle batteries. I've got these watt cycle mini 100 amp hour minis. These are look at the size of my hand. These batteries are pretty small and they're 100 amp hour and uh, I've got this 300 amp hour battery here. So I'm going to do a review on these batteries in a separate video, but I'm also going to go into a little bit of detail about how I'm powering the uh, DC hot water heater with these batteries. Thanks for watching. See you next time. You can now support my channel on Patreon, YouTube memberships, and PayPal. Patreon and YouTube members will get their name on the screen at the end of my videos. You can follow me for real-time updates on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.